Good morning, and welcome to worship on this, our fourth Sunday of Advent. I want to first just thank everyone who came out for the parking lot parade last Sunday. It really was wonderful to see at least 50 cars, we lost count after that, and all of the people they contained, and to have our distanced passing of the light um, was really uplifting, I think, for many of us. So thank you for making the effort to come out. 
I also want to let you know that Christmas Eve worship will be at 7 o'clock on our YouTube channel, and we will premiere it um, like we do on Sunday mornings. But if you want to come about 10 minutes early at 6.50, we're going to have a little bit of a hymn sing that starts that worship. So if you've been missing um, some of the carols that we haven't had time to put into our worship, come and maybe you'll hear them ahead of time. But for now, I invite you to take our usual deep breath and find a comfortable spot and prepare to enter the presence of the living God. Please join me in the call to worship. This we know, Lord. Christmas comes early or it comes late, but it does come. It comes at the bus stop. It comes in the soup line or in the middle of the night. Christmas comes in that still moment when we laid down our lives in a small chilly manger warmed only by the hearts of the lonely and know with perfect joy that we are home. Come, little word, there's a weary world waiting Come, little word, your eyes are open wide. Come, little word, the welcome table is ready. Now, little word, would be a good time. Oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. Light Watch and wait, wait, wait for, for Christ's Christ coming. coming. Light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. We light this candle for peace. We light this candle in joy. We light this candle with love. Like a fourth candle lit in the darkness, love increases the more it is shared. I will sing your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. In a world where love can sometimes be seen as weakness and hatred as strength, in a year when we have felt far away from those we love, God, remind us that your steadfast love is established forever. I will sing your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. God, we trust that you are with us, that your faithful love is as firm as the heavens. I will sing your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. Let our mouths proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. Let us proclaim the truth to the ends of the earth. We have love because God is with us. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever.
I invite you to join me now in the prayers of our community. As always, I will end each petition with Lord in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, as we near the end of the Advent road, we pray that you will guide us to meet you at the manger with open hearts and minds, willing hands, and a faithful, patient spirit, anticipating already the new life that you promise for all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the pandemic continues to surge, we lift, lift up to you our deep concern for the residents and staff of our community's assisted living facilities who are increasingly contracting the virus. We pray that the way forward with the vaccination will be smooth so that all may receive it and the community may be protected. We ask that your healing blessings and your comfort may rest upon all who suffer. And we offer our thanksgiving for the faithfulness of the staff who continue to risk their own health to care for the elders and others in their charge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our own community, as we near the end of the year, we offer a prayer of thanksgiving for all those elders, deacons, and trustees who have faithfully guided our community through this extraordinary time for the gifts of our entire community in time, creativity, energy, faithfulness, and presence as we navigated the pandemic, and especially today for our children and youth who continue to bring us light and joy, reminding us of the vibrant presence of your spirit among us in every time and place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift up our prayers for Gretchen Green, Babe Meyer, Paulette Morgan, Marilyn Kaiser. And we continue in our prayers for Eric Paquin, Pearl and Dawn Plummer, Peter and Irene Derry, Angelica Alvarez, Joanne Vander, and Debbie Schnabel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift up the silent prayers of our hearts, Lord, the ones that you have already heard and for which you already are preparing an answer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Welcome to our, our Christmas present. Is it my turn yet? Yep. Red, it is time to draw close to the mystery of Christmas. As we prepare to enter this great mystery. We are all on our way to Bethlehem. Let's go with the prophets, Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the animals, the angels, the magi, and all the rest. And all the rest. They will show us the things on this journey. But now, well, now just to back in bed, but it is also now. Long before the birth of Jesus, prophets foretold of a wonderful event, the coming of a Prince of Peace, who would be the Son of God and would bring hope to all the world. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light for a child has been born for us. A son given to us, as we rest in the part of total. And he is named awful God, no body, God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And as we shall go, God, be, and they all shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will have stepped and uphold to the justice and with right outness from this time onward and forevermore. Many years passed before the words of the prophets were fulfilled. Gabriel sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, who came to her and said, Greetings, favorite one, boy Joseph. She was much perplexed by his words and pondered what kind of greeting this must be. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now you can Receive in your womb and bear a son. You name him Jesus. The Holy Spirit upon you in power of time who overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born in the holy. He will be called Son of God. Bring Elizabeth, who are all hated, also come receive the son. 
This is the sixth month who have said, Begin, for nothing to, for nothing will be impossible with God. <laughs> what did Mary say? I know. <laughs> That's it, Felix! You did it! And the angel departed from her. The first Christmas over 2,000 years ago was a seemingly unimportant event, the birth of a child in a lowly manger in Bethlehem. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered, and all went to their own towns to be enrolled. And Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. There was no place for them in the inn in Bethlehem, and so it was that she gave birth to her first, firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in the manger.
Among the few who first heard of the birth of the Christ child were some humble shepherds in the hills near Bethlehem. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for behold, I am bringing you good news of great joy all of all the people. To you it is born this day of the city of David our Savior, who has the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will go find a child wrapped in bands and of cloth lying in the lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels left, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they left quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger.
Poor shepherds were not the only worshippers at the cradle in Bethlehem. Strange visitors also came, bearing fine gifts. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the boy, king of the Jews? We have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also play him homage. The kings set out with the star ahead of them. Finally, the star stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. They knelt before the Holy Family and offered gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The kings were then warned in a dream not to return to Herod. They left for their own country by another road. When the shepherds, the magi, and everyone who had come to greet the little king returned to their homes, they joined with the angels in glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. This year as we celebrate Christmas, may we too go on our way with praise and wonder in our hearts, giving glory to God for the gift of love in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 